Jesus himself was not exempted from battles. That's the point I'm driving. I'm showing you all the things you thought. Is it that Jesus did not pray? Is it that Jesus did not fast? Is it that Jesus did not submit to mentorship? What was his sin that he went through these battles? It was not about a sin problem. It was about a destiny problem. I wish I can tell you that there is no warfare dimension to your destiny. I wish I can tell you that just when you want and if you can think correctly, you will suddenly stumble into wealth and abundance and anointing and glory and influence. But I would be lying to you. There is a price. The price for where you are going. Listen carefully. The price for where you are going is greater than the price you paid for where you are. It's tonight. I want to show you tonight we are looking at the prophetic dimension. There are deep things I'm going to show you. But hear me brothers and sisters. Let me give you three keys very quickly and we'll wrap up. Three keys that help you to be able to war a good warfare as far as your destiny is concerned. I will not explain them, I will just list them. Number one, discernment. The first key you will need in the art of warfare is discernment. The ability to perceive spirits, the ability to interpret the writings on the wall so that you do not call good evil and call evil good. There are many, many things that carries the semblance of evil, but they are actually sent for your blessing. So you are not praying and binding things that are consistent with where God is taking you to. You need discernment. There are many, many prayers that if they are to be answered, you will not rise. So God, as an act of his mercy, just allows you just to keep exploring your knowledge there while he remains consistent with his program for you. You would have called the lion's den a negative place for Daniel. You would have called the fire a negative place for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The second key that helps you to survive warfare as far as destiny is concerned is joy. Listen, joy is a deep mystery in the spirit. Joy is not happiness. Uh -uh. Happiness is circumstantial. Joy is a revelation. He says, I will joy in the God of my salvation. One of the ways that you know that a season is about to be open for you is joy. There is a baptism of joy. There is no physical evidence that should warrant that kind of joy. But your spirit has picked something. Listen. For many of you, you are in that season right now. There is nothing physical as it were, but your spirit man has gotten something. Gotten something. Ah, lay hold on it. Lay hold on it. Don't lose it for anything. Doesn't matter what is happening. Because that joy is your strength. Number two. Every time you are in negative seasons, listen. Don't start praying and binding and casting foolishly. No, I'm not saying that as an insult. You need to discern. This writing on the wall, it looks like evil, but Lord, speak to me. Everything that carries a semblance of evil, we pray and bind it. No, 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 no. You will delay your rising discernment and then joy joy Lord I do not understand what is happening I just lost my job but joy 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 like a river so you are laughing and they say how about the rents do you have it now I don't have it but something the spirit of God is welling up joy Sometimes you need to lock your door and dance alone and rejoice alone and dance alone. It may not make sense. Hallelujah. 
the Bible says, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? That the kings of the earth set themselves against the Lord and his anointed. And the Bible says, God will look from heaven and laugh before he now administers judgment. Listen, we do not reap with joy. We reap in joy. That means your food is in the kitchen. You will have to enter the kitchen to get the food. If there is no joy for you, there is no harvest. Lose anything, but not your joy. Mm -mm. Key number three, we have to pray. The third key, are you ready now? The third key that you need is the power of prophetic intercession. Ah, yes sir. The spirit of prayer must come on someone today. Not just, not, listen. Help them please. Help them please. I release that grace upon you. I release that grace. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. The art of the altar. The ability to hold on to the horns of the altar. Take that grace. Receive it as a mantle. In the name of Jesus. The ability to pray the program of God. Not just give me tea and give me bread. No. Controlling the gates of destinies. In the place of prayer. Power with God. I stretch my hands. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take that grace. Help this man. Take that grace. Take that grace. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. If Jesus himself was not exempted from battles, that's the point I'm driving. I'm showing you all the things you thought. Is it that Jesus did not pray? Is it that Jesus did not fast? Is it that Jesus did not submit to mentorship? What was his sin that he went through these battles? It was not about a sin problem. It was about a destiny problem. I wish I can tell you that there is no warfare dimension to your destiny. I wish I can tell you that just when you want and if you can think correctly, you will suddenly stumble into wealth and abundance and anointing and glory and influence. But I would be lying to you. There is a price. The price for where you are going. Listen carefully. The price for where you are going is greater than the price you paid for where you are. It is the reason why many people begin to run a marathon when they shoot the gun. Sometimes they are up to 50. Some already know they will not finish. But you find a few people just running, maintaining that tempo. And after hours and hours of running, they are still moving. And at the end, just one person reaches the finish line. And he's done. Let me tell you this. Ask your man of God the storms that he has had to go through in his own life as a testament. I can tell you stories upon stories that will make you cry. This man standing before you is a testament of blood dripping on the altar. Make no mistakes about it. This is a sermon that many people in church, they do not like to hear this. It's why we claim many things that never happen. Because not everything in the spirit is a gift. There are realms that are rewards. There are rewards for enduring. He says that he that endures to the end will receive a crown and a white stone. Hallelujah. Read about Abraham. Do you know what it meant to be barren for 25 years? Then on top of that, your maid now has a child. And then on top of that, your child is born. And when he's 12 years, God says, go and kill him. Not let him be killed. You kill him. The Bible says he got up early. You would think that the barren, the 25 year barrenness problem would be the last challenge Abraham would ever have. No. Abraham 
Look at the trouble that came with Lot. Look at all the troubles that happened. How about the young man Joseph? What wrong did the young man do? He just went to bed like you did and had a dream. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. I saw 11 stars bowing to me. And the first trouble in his life came from his brothers. They threw him in a well. I wondered what he was saying in that well. Lord, what am I doing here? I love you. When you love the Lord and yet you are in a well, I will tell you what to do shortly. I hope this message is blessing you. Mm. Mm. There are some cups you don't pray to pass over you. You only pray for grace to drink it. But if it is to sit down, Remember the disciples were trying to lobby politically for a position on Jesus' left and right? And the mother came, you know, women came and said, look, my sons are here. Would you consider them? Jesus said, the space is available. But here's the condition. Can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? All the disciples who said, I will go with you, go and find out what happened to them. Peter, who was in a rush to say, no, I, I won't deny you indeed. This thing called destiny and this thing called enlargement is not a Pentecostal issue. It's not just an issue of saying, yes, I will go. It's wonderful. But I need you to really understand. It's the reason why so many people profess it sincerely and yet never come there. It's not because God is unjust. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the world of men. And if you do not build stamina or capacity, there are many doors that God will keep closed to help you as an act of his love for you. Because he has vetted you and said, listen, I can't bring this burden on this person. You can't go through it. When they brought Joseph out of the well, I'm sure Joseph will say, this is the end of it. Thank you, Jesus. It's over. Only for him to know that he's been sold for 30 shekels my brother selling me okay fine he now goes to the house of Potiphar and then God begins to bless him the Bible strangely tells him a prosperous man favored of God I'm sure he was comfortable things were already working out now and then here comes this woman are we together yes she comes to him what was his sin he was handsome. What if what is good in your life becomes a reason for your pain? His dream took him to the well. His looks put him to the prison. Just because I am a handsome man, when has beauty become a sin? And the wife came and listened carefully. They had every evidence against Joseph. Not every evidence is evidence. Because clearly her cloth was with him. How could you deny now? And he took Joseph to the prison. Now listen carefully. The prison is where both good and bad people meet. Don't conclude on anybody you see in the prison. The moment you find people in a prison, be careful because the prison is the launching pad. Read your Bible for glory. Whether you are Paul and Silas, whether you are Jesus yourself, are we together? Whether you are Joseph, after the prison, the moment you see anyone in the prison, start celebrating. Listen. What I'm teaching you for many of you, you will not need this message now. It's after two years from now, you will look for this tape in a hurry and listen to it one night and say, now I understand. You don't need light in the day. You only need light in the night. Now, please listen carefully. Joseph is in the prison together with other people. If they told you, who is the person in the prison is all these criminals. But there was somebody who was a king there. He was about to be literally the possessor of the entire Egypt. And he was there. And when the time was full, he had endured. 
Do you know the test he went through in prison? The test of joy, the test of relevance, the test of value that he never counted God unfaithful. He saw two people, his own contemporaries, sad. And he said, your countenance, what's wrong? And he began to interpret the dreams. And then the king called one and he said, please, when you go to the king, advocate my innocence. And the guy said, don't worry, I have your back covered. He thought it would be after 24 hours. They'll say, suddenly, you are innocent, come out. Two days became two weeks, became two months, became two years. How could I be so close to victory? And one man's carelessness adds two more years. The guy forgot. But did he really forget? No. Prophecy was playing out. When it was time for him to come out of the prison, listen, you do not know why God kept him in that prison. Let me tell you one of the reasons why God kept Joseph in that prison. He did not keep him there. He hid him there. The kind of glory Joseph had, they would have killed him before the day of his rising. What looks like a negative thing? Moses, when you find yourself being abandoned in Egypt, you are hidden. You did not miss your path. There are many times God uses negative circumstances. God does not cause evil, but there are many times he can use it as a tool if he finds room to bear his glory. He can hide you in the midst of circumstances that distract you from exposing yourself too early so that you can last until the time prophecy is ready to release you, to announce you. Are we together? And... The king had a dream and the heavens were shot over the wise men and the sorcerers and the necromancers. And the wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. There was a young man and the Bible says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. That night, if he had known that would be his last night in prison, that by the next day he would be a prime minister. Do you know if the man remembered to tell Pharaoh about Joseph, they would have brought Joseph out and he would have gone back to Potiphar's house. They would have said, all right, sorry for everything. Compensate him, no labor for two weeks. After that, he can continue. We know that he was in the prison two years plus the years he spent before his encounter with the white presser. We don't know how long that was, but he remained there. There are mountains, there are challenges that sometimes can last. Listen to me. You must obtain the staying power. The staying power. One time, I was praying for a couple. This is a true story. They were trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And please sit down. When I was praying for them and the Lord opened my eyes, and I saw three children running around. True story. Running around and playing. And then the next time they entered a car, all of them as a family. And they were going somewhere and they had a ghastly motor accident. And I saw that everybody died. And then I came back to myself. I said, how many children do you have? He said, we don't have any children. You've never had children? Yes. I said, okay. How long have you been married? Maybe eight, nine years thereabout. Never. At best, I've had miscarriages. Then I understood the vision. I said, what you call delay was God preserving a kind of pain from you. Listen, beloved people, there are many times in your life that your pain is your gift. This is a difficult message to understand. But pain can be a gift. If you get to heaven today and you are looking for Jesus, there are many ways to know him. If you use the crown alone, there are many elders who have crowns. Tell everyone to lift their hands. There is a scar that only Jesus has. 
what was an object of shame yesterday is now the symbol of his glory and royalty. A grace called honor. Please listen. When Moses was about to impart upon Joshua as mandated by God, he said, call Joshua the son of Nun in whom there is the spirit. And he says, lay your hands upon him. And he says, take some of your honor and transfer to him so that the people will hearken to him. Do you know what honor means? Honor means to be perceived to match your true worth and to be rewarded within the same proportion. That means it is possible that people can perceive you less than your true worth. To be honored means that you are upgraded in the minds of men to match your true worth and that they reward you to match that correct perception on how God has lifted you. That is the reason why in blessing Abraham, he blessed both Abraham and his name. If you are great alone and your name is not great, you are in trouble. Because your name has to be great for all those who come after you to leverage on that name. That is the reason why Jesus gave us his name. Not just his life. He says, I will bless you. Is that in your Bible? Genesis chapter 12. I will make your name great. If you are great, your greatness ends with you. But when your name is great, people can stand upon your name. That is why we hardly have brands that are 100 years old within Africa. Because we have great men, but there are hardly great names. Are you ready to receive that grace? Yes, At the end of your life, your name can be a padlock or a key. It can close the doors of everybody behind you. And they say, what name did you call? God forbid. In 1971, this name caused pain and it will lock a door. And yet there are others. When you are about to be thrown out, you will mention a name and the man will remember. And say, you are connected to that name, come back. I shouldn't have helped you, but for this name, I decree and declare in the name that is above all names, the grace that makes for honor, that blesses men and blesses their names. May that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. From today, begin to bear fruit. Through a robust prayer life in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to bear fruit by giving diligence to the word of God. And finally, this grace that has rested upon your life, let it speak loud and clear. In the name of Jesus.